have a really neat unbox and swatch. It's technically not an unbox. This was one of my Christmas presents, but I knew what I was getting into and it was something I had asked for. We're taking a look today at the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. So this was a present from Joseph Coco. Thank you so much, baby. And I got to play with these at hands on, not these particular ones, but I got to play with the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks at Hands On Creativity. So for Christmas, I got to pick what I thought would be the best colors for it. So go through them. And under, right here, I have some Blick Cut and Rag watercolor paper. So I have some nice watercolor paper that we can do our experimentation with. So the colors we're looking at today are Hematite Genuine. Do, 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 trying to find it. Uh, Buff Titanium, I think they're brand, yeah, they're branded slightly differently. And I might as well go over it with you guys. So you have, for the most part, the white wax sticker. Hopefully it won't stick to the watercolor crayon, watercolor stick itself, which is softer than the um, Winsor & Newton ones, which I also have, and I can demonstrate those in another video. You have the color name in two places except on buff titanium, which might be an older one. You have the pigment and the vehicle. So this is a gum Arabic solution. And then you also have the light fastness information, which is really nice that it's all there. And plus, you know, the, the um, barcode. Opera pink, which is so I got to hear a really funny story about this at Hands-On Creativity. Daniel Smith is really big on making light fast watercolors. Obviously they're one of the nicer brands. They usually avoid making colors that are not gonna be light fast, but the Botanical Society was so insistent that they needed a good opera pink. So they made one. And I mean, of course, being an opera pink, it's not forever light fast, but I think it has a pretty good lifespan compared to some other opera pinks. New Gamboge, Lamp Black, French Ultramarine, Quinn Gold. This must be the older formulation. I actually have some of these colors in tube form. Serpentine Genuine, so it would actually be really neat to do a comparative review. Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Graphite Gray, and it definitely looks like graphite. Let's see. I'm looking for the pigment. Yep, let's see. PBK 10. And then finally, we have Ariel Lean. Our Ariel one. So, we're going to flip this over and start swatching. So, the first type of swatching I'm going to do is just applying the stick to the paper and then washing it out with some clean water. I'm gonna start with graphite gray. And these are fairly buttery soft watercolor, I, I wanna say watercolor crayons. They're kind of like oil pastels in that regard. I've tested a few other watercolor crayon brands or watercolor stick brands on this channel. And these are my favorite because they're very buttery and you get nice pigment activation. So that was graphite gray. And I was able to purchase this pad of watercolor paper for testing nicer art supplies and also doing nicer art material tutorials thanks to the generosity of my patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so much, Lamp Black. Doing these sort of unboxing, swatchings, reviews, and tutorials, demonstrations, I run through a lot of supplies. And since we don't have a sponsor right now, all of that comes out of pocket. And I apologize for a camera shaking. So my patrons' patronage actually helps me do this sort of stuff. So again, Lamp Black. And since Dick Blick takes PayPal, I can use my Patreon money straight from my pay PayPal account without losing additional money to fees. So it's really, really handy. It helps me out a lot. 
hematite genuine. So I just wanted to thank my dear art nerds so much for their generosity for this. And I'm going to do scans of these and I'll make them available somewhere, possibly over at natosoup.blogspot.com. But and I keep mentioning this and people keep acting surprised. I'm closing the blog out at the end of the year and I do want to have somewhere archival, even if it's only for patrons for these sort of swatches. French ultramarine. I've been bouncing around ideas for uh, places where I can kind of make my swatch collection more permanent and also collate some of the art supply information that I've gathered over the years other than my blog. So hopefully I will have an announcement for that in the future. But I, I want to ease you guys into the idea that the blog is ending because people re react kind of poorly to that information. All right, Quinn Gold. I'm going to label these, so I'm keeping them in the order. And there are lots of ways to use these, and I'm hopefully going to be able to demonstrate a number of them in this video for you guys. Serpentine Green Genuine. New Gamboge. And this paper has a little bit of tooth. I'm not trying to get like perfect coverage since that kind of defeats the purpose of working with a beautiful cold press paper. I'm just trying to get enough on there that we can do a nice swatch and we have something to work with. Areolan. And I generally work kind of small for these in their current form to be useful. But like I said, there's loads of ways to use these beautiful watercolor sticks. Opera rose, or opera pink, I'm sorry. Ooh, this one's very buttery. And in the past, some of the crayons, watercolor crayons I've been able to swatch were very gummy, or they would like, well, gummy is like the perfect word. Hmm, all right, opera pink, you don't wanna move. Did something happen to you? These were ordered in, yeah, opera pink is not moving, that's weird. Um, that's really unusual considering how beautifully all these move. And I mean, I got to play with like 30 different colors at Hands-On Creativity, so I have not experienced that before. That's the first time that happened. Unfortunately, that's what I notice happening with like less, <sighs> brands with lower quality, I almost said less expensive, but the price you pay isn't always indicative of the quality you're getting. These were ordered in December though, and it's very cold. So I'm wondering if maybe the cold did something to them. And then finally, buff titanium, which is like a warm titanium white, could be really useful in like portraits, for example. Especially if you're like me and you use white gouache to do highlights. This could be a little bit more use, better for skin tones, because I find white gouache tends to be so cool tone that it looks weird on skin sometimes. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 swatches. I am going to move this over and now we're going to do swatches directly from the crayon because that's another thing you can do, which I think makes these really handy as like a travel option. Then you can also, I'm applying water onto the paper, do wet into wet techniques like that and get like a really, you get a neat combination of both the hard line and then the beautiful blend out. And that's one of the reasons I'm using a cotton rag paper for this is so that we can really get those sort of nice wet into wet blends. So that is graphite gray. And I will admit I picked it up because it was a graphite. Next, we're doing lamp black. And these don't have quite as much sedimentation as the Daniel Smith tubes do straight from the tube. Hematite Genuine, which is sort of a nice 
neutral color. Ultramarine, oh, French ultramarine. So this is the synthetic stuff. And it's a really beautiful color. Quin Gold, I'm trying to keep everything in swatch order so I can do nice labels afterneath. Afterneath, wow. Afterwards, y'all. Serpentine, genuine, serpentine, genuine. New Gamboge. Areolan. Got a little out of order, let me. Let me fix that. Opera Pink. It's hopefully this will work a little bit better. Because otherwise I don't own any of the Daniel Smith opera. I own, um, thanks to Kabocha, she sent me a tube of the Road Knight, something like that. Wow, it's like not activating. Yeah, look, very, very, very faint. What is up with you, Opera Pink? Alizarin Permanent Alizarin Crimson. So this is the one that's light fast, unlike Opera Pink. Very pretty color too. And then finally, Buff Titanium. And you can tell because your brush will start to pick up the color. Okay, I'm gonna give these a chance to dry and I'm gonna go ahead and label them for you guys. And then we can remove this pad from this piece from the paper and get to playing. Okay, so we have got everything dry and I've got everything nice and labeled. I went ahead and used a Sakura graphic one. Those are waterproof. So just in case there was some moisture, it wouldn't bleed out or affect the color. It's also permanent and light fast. So it's not going to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, whatever. It's not gonna ruin the colors or affect them negatively. So you guys can see, when you're directly applied to the paper, you do still get areas that never entirely um, wash out. That's okay. You wouldn't be using watercolor crayons, watercolor sticks, if this wasn't an effect you kind of maybe wanted. You can also just work directly from the stick itself. It works very well for that. And you can get some nice color. You can even get some separation like in hematite, hematite genuine that you wouldn't necessarily get if you work directly from the stick. Serpentine green usually has a little more gradation than this. Um, I do have a tube. I will do in another video a side-by-side -side comparison of the colors I have um, in tube form versus in stick form in case that is, you know, a deciding factor for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the block and we can get to playing a little bit. All right, so we've got a nice fresh piece of paper. We've got our paints. We're gonna start playing a little bit and this is not inclusive of everything you could do with these since I do not have a shaver, but I'm just going to start messing around, noodling around and we'll see what we come up with. And this is also not the field test. I do want to do a field test with these, but this is just kind of playing around and demonstrating some of the things these can do. So I'm gonna avoid using that opera paint because I was really not pleased with what I saw. So we're gonna do some color into color blending. You also want to be careful. I was applying too much pressure and you see I start to develop a crack. That's just going to probably flake off. Look, it's more than halfway through. Now, even if it does crack, I can save that and put it in a travel palette. You can also use an X-Acto blade and cut some off and use that in a travel palette as well. You don't have to blow the smoots away. You could leave it on, but it is going to add more color. So that depends on what you're looking to achieve. I'm just, again, noodling around, playing around. So I'm not necessarily trying to achieve anything. Not even trying to apply color all in the same direction. Just living that aimless life. I'm also just trying to get kind of a variety of colors down on the paper. I don't really care if they look good together. And if you're using a very coarse 
paper, you're gonna get, of course you're gonna get more pigment, but it's also gonna eat up your colors a little faster. So that's something you might wanna keep in mind. If you're trying to make it last, you might want to use a hot press or a finer grain. This is actually, this is a little smoother than Arch's cold press and it's a lot smoother than rough press. But it is not as smooth as say Fluid 100's cold press. So even among cold presses, there are varying degrees of texture. And then if you were using like a sanded pastel paper, which you could totally do with these, um, they're definitely gonna get used up faster. These were ordered from Dick Blick, but you may be able to find them at Plaza, Jury's Artorama, etc. Okay, so we've got lots of color on the paper. I have a spray bottle. I'm gonna go refill this. All right, so I grabbed some other brushes. I've got my spray bottle here and we're just playing around. So I'm going to spray a neat technique you can do that I, like I said, can't do because I don't have the shaver is you can use like a Derwent shaver and you can shave some color off into your pre-wet or you can wet on top of it paper and you can get some really nice effects like that. We're going to use a mop and I'm just going to, so just spraying it doesn't necessarily seem to activate the color a whole lot. Um, what it, that will probably do is prevent it from moving afterwards. And since I'm making a hot mess here, we can test that out. And you see that little bit of schmutz? No, you can't, Never mind. I'm sorry. The camera did not pick it up. All right, we've currently got a lot, a lot of water on the paper. Uh, let's see, I wanna get some of this water off. So I'm gonna grab a paper towel and I'm gonna create a thirsty brush and absorb some of this excess water from the paper surface and kind of move some of the colors around now that, they, now that they've been activated. And see, this is why we're working on a watercolor block. Keeps the paper nice and stretched and not all buckly and wibbly wobbly and wavy all over the place. And I'm actually pick, picking up a lot of color as I do this, so it's not quite as vibrant. Now, let us see, what do I have? I can do wet in the wet. Using this ultramarine blue. Let's say I apply a lot of that down here. Can I blend that out? A little bit, but not as much as you would think. I wonder if I can blend that out after it's dry. Then I've got a scrubber brush. This is from Jerry's Artorama. It's a silver scrubber. Can I lift out color while this is wet. Somewhat? Seems more like it uh, blends the color than it really lifts the color. But we also have some areas where the color is really, really thickly applied. So if you wanted to kind of break up some of those crayon strokes and make it look less, make it look maybe more organic and less scribbly crayony, you could use a stiff bristle brush like this and that's really gonna help move your color around. So that's neat. That is a good thing to know. You can also pick color up from some areas and move it into others. Blend some of those brush strokes out. And I think this blick paper is a fairly tough paper considering because I'm treating it like crap. All right, so using a softer brush, let's see if we can get the same effect. No, it really doesn't move pigment around as much as the scrubber brush does. Once you've kind of activated with the scrubber though, you can move color around a little bit more, work things out a little bit more, blend them out a little bit more, which is neat. Okay, all right, so one of my favorite things to play with is a little bit of salt, because y'all know I am a salty, salty, snarky woman. 
So we're gonna see if this will react to salt and then we're gonna see if it will react to rubbing alcohol. And then I can call this, I will call this a day and retire off to my mansion. I mean, get back to my comic work. But we can look forward to a field test. Ooh. Okay, so the rubbing alcohol seems to work where it's dry a little bit more. But it does react to rubbing alcohol, which is neat. Don't normally use rubbing alcohol in my work, except for obviously my alcohol marker stuff. I don't use it, usually use it with watercolor because it does greatly affect how long a piece will last. It will degrade your paper, it will degrade your paints, etc. Okay, so it doesn't seem to work on the areas that are dry, which is kind of a duh. It also doesn't seem to disperse crayon lines too, too much. All right, guys, we've got ourselves a de Kooning here. Ready to be hung up in MoMA. So I'm gonna let this dry and check in with you guys. All right, guys, so this has finally had a chance to dry. I'm gonna brush off those salt crystals and be right back. Okay, all brushed off. I am going to do a slow hand pan so you guys can see. The salt didn't really have any effect on this. The alcohol had somewhat of an effect, but not too, too much. Anyway, I hope this unboxing swatch plus mini demonstration was helpful, useful, and informative to you guys. I have a field test coming up next. So if you want to see these Daniel Smith watercolor sticks in action, keep an eye out for that. I also have a Windsor and Newton watercolor stick comparison coming up. So if you're interested, if you're kind of scoping out both, keep an eye on this channel for both of those. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful and hopefully I'll see you again really soon. Bye guys.